Assalamu alaikum ladies. Welcome back to Healing Aspirations with Amani. My name is Amani Obaid, your holistic dental health coach. My mission is to help women overcome their fear of the dentist and tooth pain and simplify natural oral care. Thank you for joining me today on the first day, day number one of the pre-Ramadan reboot. First, I'd like to start off by sharing with you a beautiful, nice sign of spring, a beautiful purple flower in my backyard. Alhamdulillah, praise be to Allah. My favorite color is purple. Anyhow, alhamdulillah. So I'm excited. I hope you are as excited as I am about this. Um, uh, basically, right now is spring, alhamdulillah. And what a beautiful time for Ramadan to fall during the year, during this beautiful spring weather. The sun is shining, the birds are chirping, the grass is growing, the flowers are in bloom, alhamdulillah. A beautiful time of cleansing and rejuvenation and purification and inshallah worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, I know a lot of you, although you're excited for, for Ramadan, you're still a bit apprehensive and a little bit worried because for the last few years it's been during the times when the days are long, you've been probably uh, pregnant and or breastfeeding, um, and even, or even if you don't have any children, you've been through a lot of stress over the last few years and you are worried about how you're going to survive this Ramadan. You actually wondered how you even survived it last year. And you really want it to be your best Ramadan, but you just don't know how you're going to optimize it this time. And this is why I decided to uh, do this two-week series, a pre-Ramadan reboot to boost your system in all aspects, inshallah. Now, um, I did want to make sure I have some notes with me today because I didn't want to... Um, uh, mm -hmm. I want to make sure I say the Quran uh, verses properly uh, as, and any of the hadiths properly as well. The, today's video is going to be one of the longer videos in the series because I wanted to make sure that I cover two very important aspects which you'll see later in the video inshallah. Um, but inshallah for the rest of the two weeks they will be short and sweet, something that you can apply um, each and every day to your routine. You're basically going to stack each um, tip on top of what you've already done from the day before. But today is basically the foundation of the reason why you're going to engage in all the different tips I'm going to give you over the next two weeks. Today's the foundation. So what is that foundation? We know that the prophets are the best of creation. We know that Friday is the best day of the week. And that Mecca is the best place that any person could hope to visit and experience being a Muslim. And just like we have all these different aspects, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made Ramadan to be the best month of the entire year. And because it happens once a year, you know that you have to prepare for it in advance. And you know that you're going to uh, do your best and you want to try extra hard during this time to reap its benefits, inshallah. You want to attain you the forgiveness of Allah. You want to have a purified heart. You want to have a greater awareness of your religion of Islam. You want to have a greater consciousness of your Lord Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Ramadan is the prime time to seek all these things because this is the time when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to chain up the shayateen. He's going to chain up the devils. Um, you're basically going to have a fitna-free environment um, in order to achieve these goals, right? So it's within your best interest to make the best of it. And um, inshallah, uh, this is a huge and very important goal. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has designed, he's designated Ramadan solely for this reason. He said, Oh, you believe, in chapter 2, verse 183, fasting is prescribed for you as it was prescribed upon those before you in order that you may attain, attain taqwa, which is God consciousness. So during this blessed month, you want to attain forgiveness and you want to attain uh, taqwa, the God consciousness, and you want to maximize your efforts and make the best out of it. And I know that you wanted to make the best out of it. It's, easy, it's easier said than done. I've been there, there. And um, we know that it all depends on what your existing state of spirituality is, uh, the food that you're currently eating, your sleep routine, and the amount of physical exercise that you're getting. They all play a different role, a part of the, of the big picture on what your state is before you enter Ramadan. So this is why it's so important to plan and prepare for Ramadan and if you want to make the best of it, right? You can't just wing it. 
you can't just wing it. Now, this is just a little thing I wanted to say before I start. And I pray inshallah subhanahu wa ta'ala to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that this Ramadan is the best for myself as well that I've ever experienced and I pray for that for you as well. And I, uh, in advance I ask you, if you find this video beneficial, please share it with your friends and family. Tag your friends as well inshallah. So the first thing I want to say, and I'm sure you've heard this before, is failing to plan is planning to fail, right? Um, we've all had the best intentions to make this Ramadan the best Ramadan yet, but a lot of times we fail miserably. And I say this to myself before I say that to anyone else. And when you're not planning, this actually contributes a lot to the failure that you experience and the suffering they experience. So that's why it's within our best interest to plan ahead um, as the center of everything that we do in life. And we actually have a few examples um, from the Prophet Sallallahu and the companions about this. Um, why? So even though Ramadan hasn't come yet, it's in a couple of weeks, um, we know that fasting is not an easy task, right? It's going to, whether we like it or not, it does place a strain on us physically and mentally. You're pushing yourself to the limit. You are striving to do more worship and you're doing this on less sleep, on less food and on less water, right? Now, if, like I said, if you are not going to plan for it, you are not going to plan to achieve it, right? If you fail to plan, then you plan to fail. So we know from the Prophet, the life of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and his companions, how diligent they were in preparing to welcome Ramadan. The Prophet وسلم, would fast most of the days in the month of Shaban, which is the month before Ramadan, the month that we are in right now, um, in the lunar calendar. So Aisha, عنها, one of the wives of the Prophet, she said, I never saw the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, fasting a complete month except the month of Ramadan, and I have never seen him fasting in a month more frequently than he did in Shaban. And this is found in Bukhari. So the companions actually, they emulated the Prophet and they went to great lengths in order to prepare for Ramadan by asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala six months in advance for Allah to grant them a life long enough in order to reach that next Ramadan. So they would spend six months um, in anticipation of Ramadan and then when it was over, uh, six months they would be saying, uh, basically saying their goodbyes to Ramadan. So today, uh, in the video, you may have done this before yourself and even if you have, this is just a reminder for you to do it again, is to do two things. One of them is to set your goals. And um, Earl Nightingale has said, and I quote, people with goals succeed because they know where they're going. If you don't have a goal set, you're not gonna know where you're going, you're gonna have no direction, right? You're just gonna be heedless during this time, and this is the last thing that you want to happen. So. If you want to make this Ramadan the best Ramadan yet, you need to define for yourself what makes it your best Ramadan. What goals do you want to achieve this Ramadan to make it the best and most memorable one for you yet in your life? Now, um, we know that the shayateen, they're shackled and they're imprisoned during this month. And so we actually don't have to worry as much about their whisperings. We have to worry about our own um, deficiencies, right? But inshallah, the fact that they are uh, shackled, this gives us an opportunity to make it easier for us to achieve these goals. Now, when I mean goals, there are a few things that I would recommend when you're setting your goals. And I know this may, again, seem weird why I'm talking about this right now. Assalamu alaikum dua. Thank you for joining me, Habibti. Um, uh, the goals are important because you're going to need to do the things I'm going to recommend to, for you over the next couple of weeks in order to achieve these goals. So this is to remind you of where you're heading and why you're doing it. In terms of the goals, what do you want? First you want, number one, is simple and achievable goals, right? So for example, let's say you want to understand a part of the Quran, a specified number, um, or that you want to be uh, consistent with your um, with your sunnah prayers, right? Something like that. And you wanna set a maximum of five goals. And if you've never set goals before for Ramadan, I would recommend that you start off with three. So that way you're not overwhelmed, inshallah. The, so that's the first point. The first point is I want you to set um, simple and achievable goals. You wanna set a five, a maximum of five. If you haven't done so, start with three. 
And the third thing is I want you to set a clear timeline and some action points. So your goals shouldn't be very vague. They need to be specific. So for each goal, you need to have a clear timeline and action points. So for example, if one of your goals is to memorize a little bit of Quran, some small part of the Quran, then make sure you write it down when you're going to do it, where you're going to do it, and how you're going to do it, right? So you want to specify a time, you're going to specify the location it's going to happen, and whatever technique you're going to use, inshallah. And the reason why, it may seem kind of redundant, why is this all these details seem so unnecessary, but it's important because with the more detail you have, then this is going to um, lessen the chance that you're going to procrastinate, inshallah. The next point is that you want to track your goals. So use whatever system you like to track your goals. You want to use an Excel spreadsheet. You want to get one of those Ramadan planners. Whatever works for you. You want to make your own planner. Make sure you have a system to track your goals. That way you see your progress and you see where you're falling short. You see where you have to work harder, inshallah. And the next point is create accountability, right? So it's important for you to have a buddy system with someone that you talk to, one of your friends, that um, your husband, for example, um, one of your siblings, like I said, one of your friends, um, and their main role is to assist you in completing this goal without failing. Now, if you don't have someone around you, try to get someone that you can talk to on the phone, right? Um, and let's say you can make a specific time that you can talk to this person each day so you guys can update each other on your goals. And the thought that you're going to have to call and let that person know that you failed at achieving your goal for that day will definitely prevent you from missing out on your goals, right? This accountability really, really helps, inshallah. So I'm just going to quickly recap because I know it's a lot of points for today. But like I said, this is important because this is your foundation, inshallah, for the month of Ramadan. So simple and achievable goals, maximum five or maximum of three goals, setting clear uh, a clear timeline and action points, a uh, method of tracking your goals and an accountability or buddy system, inshallah. This has to do with setting goals. And the next part is making your own dua or supplication list. And what a beautiful thing that you are with me today, dua, Habibti. So there is no better month than Ramadan to make some really, really heartfelt and much needed duas in your life. Look at your life, look where you are. You know that there is no, that nothing can help you, no one can help you except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is the time you can get closest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ask him whatever you wish. Right? Now, Abu Huraira said, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, the supplications of three groups of people are not rejected. The dua of the fasting person when he is breaking his fast, the dua of a just imam, and the dua of the oppressed, right? So in Ramadan, this is your opportunity for you to ask Allah what you wish and for him not to reject your dua. Now, what you can do, something very simple, just write a small list of things that you need in this world and in the here, in the, in the akhirah, in the afterlife, inshallah. And what you can do is just limit it to 10 and write them down in, in, in a dua format. Make sure you have this in like a, written down in a small cue card or something and carry it wherever with you so that you can remember to um, say these duas um, over and over again in the hopes that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at one point would accept them as he has promised to, inshallah. Now, the greatest benefits of having the dua list is, first of all, it's going to help you stay focused when you're making your dua. And the du'a list helps you to remember your du'a, right? How many times have you really, really wanted something, but with all the hustle and the bustle during the month of Ramadan, you taking care of the kids and the cooking and the cleaning and the homeschooling and what have you, you forget what you actually wanted to, and the end of Ramadan happens, you're like, oh my God, I forgot to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about this, even though you've been thinking about it for so long, right? And the other thing, which is super, super cool, is repeating the du'a inspires you to do action, right? Now, you can't just sit and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for something for you just, you know, Sit and just expect it to have to happen. You have to take action, right? So in Islam, um, part of the etiquette of dua is that you are doing your best within your means to make that goal achievable, inshallah. But you know that the result is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You yourself are not going to get the goals yourself. It's whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants you. So when you repeat the dua, you are going to, uh, inshallah, um, take more action which would lead you to achieve success inshallah with that dua so those are the two main things i wanted to talk about today 
is the gold setting and the du'at setting. Um, because like I said, this is the foundation, inshallah, uh, to achieve success this Ramadan, inshallah ta'ala. Uh, tomorrow, starting tomorrow, and for the rest of the two weeks, what I'm going to do is, like I said before, give you a little tip each day that will help you prepare yourself physically and mentally um, for Ramadan, so that by the time Ramadan comes, it's not a shocker to your system. You are ready, you are prepared for it, you are cool, you are calm, you are composed, you are not irritable, you are ready to take on, you know, the uh, the long hours without sleep or uh, long hours without food or drink. You are ready to um, push yourself a little bit and, um, uh, inshallah, survive on less sleep. And you're going to make sure that you are focused and you're able to um, not have the brain fog. You're not suffering from headaches, from, you know, whether it's caffeine withdrawal or sugar withdrawal, that you still have abundant energy to run around with your kids. Um, that also given me being a holistic dental health coach, that you lessen the amount of tooth sensitivity that, you, that happens during the month of Ramadan because a lot of times um, the, the issues end up quadrupling during the month because of all these different factors and the fact that you haven't prepared your body for it, inshallah. Um, so uh, that's it for today. It's a little bit kind of, of a more structured Facebook Live. Uh, I just, like I said, I wanted to set the foundation if you have any questions, comments, let me know. You can t uh, you can comment on this uh, Facebook Live uh, post or you can private message me. Also, I'd love to hear from you. What are your goals for Ramadan, inshallah? I'd love to see what everyone's uh, um, hoping to do and achieve. And, and this will basically inspire us to, inshallah, achieve excellence during this blessed month. Jazakumullah khairan for tuning in. Uh, make sure to not just like, love this post and share it with your friends and family. Tag your friends and invite them to like and follow the page so they can get all the notifications, inshallah. Thank you so much. And assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I'll see you tomorrow.